Hello, this is a tutorial to add actual NPCs to the game that have more than what they currently put into the game so far. When you first start up the SDK, the SDK itself would show you that there is only an, an enemy, which is kind of stupid. Uh, there, there is nothing in there that indicates uh, indicates how you should add more to it than what we currently have, which is this bald guy. So I'm gonna show you right now how to do it. To you simply start with adding an NPC to your level. Just put put him anywhere; it doesn't matter. Uh, he's cur he's currently an enemy, so we'll make him a friend. Which you can do in properties when you select them. If you if you don't have the properties window, you simply go to uh, Windows, which should be somewhere on the top, and then enable it. So it says properties. So w when you're done with that, we simply go to one of the original levels that were made in the SDK. The SDK AI NPC level. So you open it up. Takes a while. Uh, we're here. Uh, this is the map. It comes automatically with the SDK. The idea of this is if you look into the scope uh, visual script uh, in the map on the switch which spawns NPCs, you can see how they did it. So I'll open this up. Normally this is called visual script. So we'll look for that. Here it is. So select that. Open up the visual script. We'll take a look into it. So how it works is this is the switch. So when you enable it, it does all this stuff. If you dig deeper, there is uh, extra scripts the developers made, which is called the unique generic NPC script. If you open these, so just I'll select and press enter. They make well they they make they make an uh, uh, the whole NPC by itself with all the required elements that are in, in, in the original game. So we'll get out of here. Now, before we start, you how the engine works uh, is that it it can precache precache anything. That means it it doesn't save any models by itself. Only what the map maker adds into the game. By by that I mean is that you need to add everything yourself uh, to make it function. Uh, that is why it's it's also all grouped up. So, to add NPCs with clothing like these, weapons, anything you like, simply select each group and make prefabs out of them. Uh, prefabs are used for a lot of things. You should use them a lot just to save on work. By default, you don't have any of these. You won't see them. So we need to add them manually. And how, how do we do that? We simply select one. So it has to be a group, first of all. And after you select a group, you simply click Export Prefab, which is in the top right. And you name it anything you like. Like mine is NPC set Moscow for this one. And you go over the whole thing. So Moscow. The desert ones, yeah, no, the bridge, the bridge NPC sets, and so on and so forth. 
after that is done you simply do the guns as well which you can see right here normally it's a group so I have these as well which is called required weapons so e export these as a prefab once you're done with grouping and exporting each piece in the map like all of them you simply go back to the main map so we'll open it uh, we don't want to save changes we simply go back to the level we came from okay we're here so this is the NPC we added uh, at the start of the video to to add prefabs you simp simply go to the bottom left to the entity list and you drag these out so I'll start I, I want to add the Moscow set there it is we'll move it a bit more to the side and the required weapons now why why do we need these um, how the how the engine works right here is y y it's for the prefab so it already loads those in but the engine clones things so and anything that goes onto an NPC is like uh, duplicated and then thrown onto the entity like like this one uh, the same with guns you you always need one to exist so we can add those uh, onto the player, the NPC, or anything. If I would delete, for example, the uh, AK out of the group, the the Hell Hellringer, I think this one, the crossbow, uh, y y you can get those because they don't exist according to the engine because the the map you loaded uh, doesn't have those in in the map. So once you add all those in, so the the group and the weapons we simply go back to the NPC and we open up his uh, script scope now what is a script scope basically every entity has uh, an empty layer where you can add visual code onto like we've seen on the switch you get you can add those uh, you can add as many as you want uh, to keep it organized, the easiest way is uh, to open up the scope from the entity you supposed to edit, like where you add the script on. So when you select the enemy, we can go to highlight it and open VS. Alternatively, you can uh, check the name and you simply go to script. And then we find the entity. So in the object list, like if you don't have any of the windows, there is a there is a button here. Uh, you can open them all up. So we just the object list, and we look for enemy. So here he is. So we open it up. Here it says it opened up enemy zero zero zero. This is his uh, scope. So once that's done, uh, once that's done, we simply add onto it the subscript which the developers made to make NPCs so uh, the subscript it was called NPC generic oh uh, it, it's somewhere it's some uh, uni generic NPC that was it and this is a script inside the script but all we have to do is just connect it with two pieces and it should work fine um, the activate button is uh, to activate, like, trigger it on onto uh, the entity we, we throw in there. So first, the target, which we want to be obviously our guy over here. So we go to the object list, our, our guy over here, we throw him in. Here we go, it says self, so it's, it's because we, we threw it into his scope, so it is the entity self because we're inside of it. Exactly. 
then to trigger this we need uh, a trigger obviously uh, it should be an event uh, it can be anything like there there are a lot of events like you need to you need to look them out uh, okay start this this event simply uh, makes uh, triggers the moment you start the game so when you start the game it, it triggers the event you go to activate and then we make the npc uh, whatever we want them to be. Now, before we do this, uh, you don't want to do this actually. So you just select the line, click delete. You want to add uh, another entity which is called locker. Mm -hmm. uh, a locker, the easy one, is something that delays the event by a couple frames. Why? Why should you do this you ask? You should do this when you, you. This is like a de this is a default event. If you have a lot of these events that all trigger at the same time, when your when your game starts, because it, it's the game start event, you don't want everything to instantly get executed. You want to some headroom after something happens, so you don't crash. So and and so on and so forward. If, if if you had also in the same script like multiple ones, uh, multiple pieces, you you maybe want to like go next frame or two frames, uh, depending on how many you add. You, you can go this one next frame and the next one two frames, and so on. Always some delay so you don't execute everything at once. Because you don't want uh, later on to uh, see the game crash, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you'll probably be thinking how 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 that works. But uh, it's just how it is. It's the best way to prevent things like that. So once we select a locker, uh, remove the auto lock. We we don't want to. Uh, lock that yet. Uh, auto lock basically is if if you execute. Uh, it will lock this thing uh, anytime you the game starts again uh, during the game it will it, it it can't call it because it's locked and we don't we don't want that we we always want to execute this no matter what we just want to delay it by two frames there you go I'll always delay two frames you can choose next frame but two frames probably works the best and then we activate the subscript. So after all this, I it should work. So simply save. Uh, the save button is uh, Control S. And here we go. Now he, he has a script attached to him. You see the blue icon. And we can just press F5. To test. Now y this is another thing. Um, this can easily be fixed. But you need to do it a specific way, so if we go ranged weapon, you ca you can see when you when you drag in an en enemy NPC or any NPC, they they always have a gun. The issue with this one is you can delete it. It doesn't want to. Nope. But you can delete it if you go into the 3D viewport. You select the AK. You see, you select it. You click simply delete. And oof. there we go. And now it should work. So you can, uh, if you want to edit anything, we simply go back into the script. We select the subscript, which is purple, and you can edit it to anything. Like it can be an AK, it can be whatever you want. Uh, auto fix clause, auto fix range. I mean, he should evade vehicles, you know, he's that cool. And then, range weapon, revolver, anything. Edit as much as you like. Once you're done, you simply save again. You can see, uh, when you save, the the star icon will be gone, so you just save. And let's go back again. There, there you go. Now, now he has all the guns you want. He has an AK even. 
And his second gun is the revolver, which he has currently on. There you go. That, that's how you add uh, NPCs with their own sets of armor. Uh, always make sure to only add the pieces you need. I mean, you can add everything if you want, but uh, you don't. You, you want to save entities. Just add what you need. If you're only going to use the Moscow uh, NPCs, just add the NPCs from the Moscow one. And there you go. That works. 